Alrighty, so hello and welcome to everyone to an introduction to the Neurographica method, which is a, a mindful, transformational, um, life-changing, I'm going to say, art method. Just to trigger everyone a little bit, and we're going to see how it can change your life. <laughs> Uh, maybe a few words about me for anyone who does not know me yet. My name is Antje Howard. I am originally from German, uh, from Germany. Um, I am a Neurographica trainer. So I um, trained with the Institute of Psychology of Creativity Institute is called. Um, that was created by the founder of this method, whose name is Pavel Piskarev. Um, I actually trained in German because I'm uh, a native German, but I live in the US. So I live in California since almost eight years. I have a background in education, I have a degree in education, and I used to teach future art teachers, but then I quit my job and changed my life and went traveling and uh, landed here um, after I met my husband. And now I live on a mountain in beautiful nature um, and I love to teach art so uh, this is the background this is the story and I don't know maybe some of you have seen my introductory video where I shared my very very first Neurographica drawing which had a, a mind-blowing effect on me uh, maybe you have seen some drawings maybe you have seen the artwork and maybe you've been drawn by the aesthetics that it has, by the kind of roundedness, and maybe you're curious about this process. And um, what I will introduce to you today is why we work with it, uh, some ideas and theories of how it works, and uh, we're going to do a drawing. So we're going to actually do some practice as well. Um, so this is overall short, uh, but hopefully um, yeah, thorough introduction to the method. Usually I share my screen and I show you what I draw. So I'm going to just start with that right away. Um, I like to explain and show things at the same time. So, uh, yeah, we're going to dive right into it. Um, there we go. Alrighty. So, uh, here's some materials that I work with. Usually, as I said, my favorite tool is the Sharpie. I have some other pens and I usually use colored pencils, uh, sometimes other things as well, but um, these are my main tools. So now we will start with the big question, what is Neurographica? Okay. So this is the question here. As I mentioned, uh, this method was created by a man uh, named Pavel Piskorev, who is a Russian psychology professor so uh, and an artist and many other things. Um, so the method was created with a theory of our mind with the theory of our psyche in the background. I'm not going to go into the theory that actually comes in the course, um, but I'm going to try to explain it in simple words. So I'm going to say it is a transformational, transformational drawing practice. So what does that mean? How is it transformational? So we usually start with ourselves. And um, in Neurographica, often we start with something that we kind of want to change, something that we have in mind that bothers us. This is what we especially work with in the Neurographica Basics course in the Algorithm 1. Um, so we start with something that we have on our minds, and that is what we call a theme. So before we even start drawing anything, we think about something. We start with our mind. So it's a practice that involves 
our thinking, our mind. So we can draw, for example, um, a challenge that we face in life. We can uh, draw something that we want to change. It's very, very good for changing things. Or a question, for example. Uh, we will set an intention before we draw. So it is an intentional method. We don't just draw for fun, we draw with an intention. And this is really the first step. Before we start anything else, we start with the intention. What we do then is we also involve our emotions. as well as our entire body. So this is like a very <laughs> simple um, way to show the body. Okay, so we work with mind, emotions, and body. We work on these three levels of our self. So how do we do that? Uh, with self-observation. Self-observation is one of the main ingredients of Neurographica. Say here is self-observation. So while we are drawing, we constantly come back to ourselves, um, which helps us understand things on different levels. So we bring the mind, the emotions and the body into our drawing. All of those become part of the drawing. Um, and the drawing, if you've seen it before, often consists of lines that are connected. And then maybe we have circles somewhere. Um, so we bring all of these things into this drawing. So parts of this will be um, emotions. Well, we will have our emotions in here. We will have our physical experience in here. And we will also have whatever's in our mind in here in the form of shapes, colors, and lines, which are the main ingredients of the actual drawing. So we work with what we call a visual language. So here we have a visual language that is abstract. It is a form of abstract drawing. We really work with very simple tools. Um, the main ingredients, as I said, are shapes. In the beginning, we especially work with circles later also with squares and triangles and then we work with what we call the neurographic line which is one of the main ingredients and we're definitely going to work with that today and then also we work with color the energy of color um, so those are the things that make up this language um, and in the end you will end up with a piece of art that only you understand. It is a language that once we learn it, once we learn the ingredients, kind of the grammar of it and the uh, vocabulary of it, we make it our own. So your drawing will have meaning for you. And this takes us to what happens at the end. At the end, hopefully, we have a different outlook on the things. We may have a little light go, go off in our mind. Light bulb. <laughs> Gotta say what this is, light bulb. So we might have a new perspective. This is really one of the goals, new perspectives. Uh-oh. Uh, we might have ideas ideas. We might have insights. Uh, we might get answers. If we ask a question, we might find some answer. We might create solutions. 
and in the end it can help us to a better self-understanding and thing sorry <laughs> so and this can help us in the end to actually change our lives if we choose so This is how it's a transformational drawing practice. No, we want to transform our state of being. So we start with an intention. We start with awareness of something that we want to change. Then we go into a process that involves the actual drawing as well as self-observation. And then through this process, we activate our intuition our inner wisdom our like inner voice we learn to listen to these inner voices and uh, we create new perspectives in our mind so it can have a profound impact on the mind um, and it all works through us giving meaning to the things that we see meaning So we can assign meaning to all of these elements of our alphabet. I can say that the circle is me, that this triangle is a problem that I have, and that the square is something that will help me, for example. So I assign meanings to the things. I also create meaning by observing myself. So if I draw the circle and I have certain emotions come up, then I can interpret that. So it's really a process of um, communication with ourselves through the medium of drawing. Okay, so I hope that this, um, as a first theoretical outline of what we're talking about, makes sense for you. Um, now, I am not a person that... Um, you yeah. That only works for theory. Uh, we're going to go into practice. And as some people that might have worked with me already might know, I like to start with tuning in through a short meditation. So I invite you. Uh oh, I have an ant walking on my picture here. Okay. I invite you to sit with me for a moment to just feel into this to become aware so really we we have to start with an awareness of ourselves some kind of awareness of ourselves and then we can strengthen it through the drawing process so i invite you to sit comfortably take a few deep breaths if it feels comfortable for you you can close your eyes i always recommend placing your feet on the ground and let's just take a few deep breaths First, inhaling through your nose and you can exhale out of your mouth if that feels good. And let's first release anything that doesn't belong in this moment. Anything that you might have brought into the space from today. Anything that happened before you came here. releasing it you can also use your voice oh. and then maybe there's something that's in the future something that happens later today or tomorrow and also releasing that <sighs> and let us arrive in this moment here and now breathing into yourself Sinking into your body, really connecting with your body. Feeling your feet on the ground, feeling your legs, feeling your buttocks on the chair, the weight of your body as it pushes down. Feeling your back and your belly relax. Relaxing your chest. 
allowing your shoulders to sink down. Come on. Feeling your arms, your hands and fingers. Feeling your neck and your throat, your head, your face. And allowing your face to relax as well, your forehead, your eyes, allowing your jaw to drop, soften, and just feeling into your body for a moment, becoming aware of where you are, what sensations are present. Is there comfort, discomfort, very strong feeling somewhere? Which part of your body is very present for you right now? And which part don't you have access to at the moment? Just becoming aware without trying to change anything, without judgment. Just breathing into your body, being here and now. And then take a few deep breaths into your heart. Maybe seeing if you can open your heart space a little bit. And dropping into your emotions. How do you feel emotionally? What kind of feelings are present? you feel excited, curious? Is there maybe some irritation somewhere? Maybe you can name it. And again, without thinking about it as good or bad, as right or wrong, just feeling whatever is there to feel right now for you. And breathing into it. Allowing yourself to relax into your emotions. Mm. And then checking in with your mind, with your thoughts. Just observing whatever is happening in your mind. Are your thoughts moving fast? Are they already at different places? Are they judging or questioning or wondering? And again, just observing, just allowing these thoughts to be there without getting stuck in them, without really following them, just becoming aware of what is happening inside of you. And breathing into that, and allowing the thoughts to move on. And I invite you to bring a smile to your face. And just being with yourself as you are right now. And as I said, we want to start with a theme, a topic, something that is happening in your life right now. And I invite you to choose something that maybe irritates, annoys you just a little bit. We don't want to start with like the big life themes right away. We want to start with just little things that may be nice if they could shift just a little bit. Whatever it might be, <laughs> we have a plumber here today. So I'm going to be working with the theme of getting the house fixed, something that's been annoying me for a few days. So it can be little things like that. It can be the dishes that are still standing, it can be the house that's dirty and needs to be cleaned, something that needs to be done. Maybe someone that's been bothering you at work, some little thing, maybe technology not playing out as you want it to. Just finding something small in your life where you feel like, yeah, it would be nice to test this and see what can come out. Or maybe it's something that's been bothering you about yourself, like a 
circle that you've been walking in in your mind, something that you feel stuck with, something that you want to change in whichever way without having a clear outcome in your mind. Let's just focus on whatever that is right now. And again, I invite you to feel into your body, your emotions, your mind with that topic in mind. How does your body feel about it? How does your emotion react to it? And what are your thoughts about this little annoying thing, this little thing that would be nice to change, to make better somehow? And just breathing into that for a moment. And then I invite you to bring your hands together in front of your chest and start rubbing them for a moment. Bringing warmth and energy flow, blood flow. And then bringing your hands over your eyes for a moment. And just feeling the energy of your hands. Whatever sensation comes up there, maybe it's a tingling, maybe it's warmth, maybe some kind of flow. Just feeling into it. And I invite you to imagine that you're creating a connection between your hands and your eyes. Between your hands and your vision, your inner vision, your brain. And inviting your intuition, your higher self, or however you're connected to it, to guide you through this drawing. Guide your hands and allow you to see whatever you need to see. And then I invite you to just start rubbing your face, very gently waking yourself back up, maybe allowing your hands to move over your head or your neck or your shoulders, wherever feels comfortable. And then whenever you're ready, very, very gently opening your eyes, and coming back. Okay, so now we can start drawing a little bit. So um, as I said here, we have this abstract visual language and one of the most important elements of it is a line that we call the neurographic line or Pavel Piskorev also, he named it after himself, so we can also call it the Piskorev line. This line is um, a line of nature, of natural movement, which means that it does not follow a pattern. We can experiment with this, and this is what we're going to do first. We're going to draw a few lines, and really just like three or four lines, across our paper from left to right and the line can go whichever way it wants to go and here I invite you to just follow it with your eyes allow your hand to move however it wants to move so I'm just going to start somewhere and go very slow and this is really an exercise in slowing down and I will feel the line, allowing my body, my emotions, and my mind to feel the movement that my hand makes. And it is a movement without any direction. I will hopefully arrive on the other side at some point. But how I get there, I don't know yet. It is not written yet. It is being created in this moment. So as I said, let's draw three, maybe four, and really allow yourself to go slow to where you can feel the line. Focusing more on your inner sensation than 
on where you want this line to go, how it looks. You want to feel the inner reaction to it. You can feel maybe in some places it's comfortable. Maybe some places might be even uncomfortable. And we want to go there too. We want to explore all the different sensations. Allowing yourself to even explore sensations that feel like discomfort. Allowing yourself to go there, meet those sensations with the help of the line. And of course the lines will cross and we can pay attention to how that feels. Allowing the rind to grow like a root or flow like a river in a natural way without our mind forcing it in any way. And I will draw one more. Starting anywhere on the one side and arriving anywhere on the other side. Allowing to slow down and to feel and to observe. Taking a deep breath, and you can just observe whatever you see there. Just looking at the little chaos that we just started. Um, now I want to explain the next step, and I'm going to explain it on a separate piece of paper to really show you what I'm talking about. Um, we need to make connection. So I'm just going to quickly draw two lines here that meet here and there. So I have these spots where the lines meet, where I have two lines crossing. And what we do here is what we call rounding, which is probably what most of you see when you see a Neurographica drawing. So rounding means that out of this cutting crossing point, we will create a connection, like a little hub, like a little um, neuron connecting. Oh, well, this is where it also uh, assembles, or um, how do you say? resembles, yeah, it resembles um, neurons, for example. So I will go into my drawing and wherever I see these crossings, I will make connections. And the way I like to do it, and I really recommend to do that, is whenever you have a shape somewhere, make it a round shape. Go into the shape, I go over the lines several times, and just exploring the inside of the shapes that appear. Making smooth connections. So we always want to attach the connection to the line so that when I have a line and I make a connection, it's not like this big connection that is kind of disconnected from the line. So it doesn't look like this where we have like a stopping point here, but I go into the line. I smooth it out. You want it as smooth as possible, as connected as possible. I hope that makes sense. So I'm going to go back to my drawing. And now I'm going to connect 
all the little connections here. All the little points where my lines are crossing. I'm going to create this rounding. And I'm going to say it does not have to be perfect. This is not an exercise in perfection. This is just an exercise in softening. And I invite you to again observe yourself while you do that. Stay with your body, with your emotions, with your mind. Neurographica is really like an active meditation where we can feel into the things, into the drawing. And everything we change in the drawing has an effect on our being and we want to become aware of this effect. So I want to feel into that, become aware if this is actually calming me down or maybe I feel butterflies in my stomach. Maybe there are certain shapes that I really like where I feel very comfortable. Maybe there are shapes that I don't like. Just listen to your inner dialogue. There's no right or wrong. And just try it. Just try out the rounding, the connecting. Where really afterwards, you want to end up with a picture that is connected, where everything is part of one network. This is what we call the neurographic pattern. I invite you to breathe, coming back to your breath, coming back to your body. Taking your time with it. flowing through your drawing. And I'm going to give everyone a few more minutes for this smoothing out and as I said doesn't have to be perfect allow yourself to be a beginner this is really a practice that where you get better with practice I don't even know how many pictures I've drawn so I've done this for several years many 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 times I've done Compare yourself, just be with your own drawing, with your own process, with your own feelings and thoughts. Mm.
background. So I hope that you have some parts rounded. As I said, it's not necessary to have everything perfectly rounded and you can come back to this later. Now I would like to introduce a part of the practice um, that I really, really like where we bring in this theme that we um, kind of named before. So just thinking about the little annoying thing that you might want to change that's kind of, um, yeah, in your life right now, that's present in your life right now, and find a place for it in the drawing. I'm going to find a place, like a spot that is a little bit open. For me, it's like this spot up here. There is openness, but it can also be between the lines. You want to find a place that is not completely full, but where you have some openness and then draw a circle there where you can place your theme. And circles do not have to be perfect. I have been drawing circles for several years, so don't try to make perfect circles. Just find a relatively open area and draw a circle there. And it can, it's okay if it's an egg shape, that's absolutely fine. Just a round shape, I'm going to say. We, we work with round shapes. And then we want to connect this round shape to our network by rounding out the corners where the circle meets my lines. So I'm going to go and everywhere where my circle meets lines, just going to round it out making sure that the circle is connected to my network here. And so I can think about it as I'm making space for this thing that I want to change. If we really want to change something, first of all, we have to look at it. We have to acknowledge it. We have to be with it. And then from there, from this kind of informed and aware place, then we may can um, create inner change. And in it's all about inner change. So what we will do with this circle now is what we call a catharsis in Neurographica which means it's a spontaneous expression of emotion, of inner feeling, of like negative thoughts maybe even. And I'm going to just very gently <laughs> show you a, what a catharsis looks like on my extra paper. So I take a pen, usually in the class, um, I always have a, what I call my crappy pen. Um, so you don't want to take your favorite pen, but we're going to not like do it very, very strong. We're just going to do a little bit. And I like to have my pen in my hand. I feel into my feeling. You know, I feel into this, like been waiting for the plumber for this week. And it really just like, ah, oh, it was annoying. And I bring this annoyance out in like a scribble. I can do this again, maybe with this one. So it would just look like this. So I'm going to put something like this into my circle where I just spontaneously release this energy. And here I created a space for it where it can be, where it can live right now. So I don't want it all over my picture right now. I want it just in here. So I'm going to breathe into that and say, ah, and just do it for one or two seconds. Very, very short, one or two seconds. Just throw it out. Whatever needs to come out, just throw it out. I'm giving everyone a moment to do that. And now we can change it. So what we will do first is round any corners. Here in this one, of course, I have a lot of corners because it's a, uh, um, it's a, a, a scribble. So I'm just going to go into this figure, into this shape and round out any corners that I see here make all the shapes into round shapes. 
And I just go in here. And I, in a way, I just sit with it. I'm just like, okay, I know that you're here. I know that you're annoying. And I'm going to be with it. I'm going to allow this to exist in my world. Because it does. And then, of course, wherever it meets um, other parts of my drawing, where I have some lines going through here, I also connect that. So I connect it. And I say, okay. This is a reality for me. Oh, I don't want to run away from it. I'm just going to say, yeah, this is what's happening right now. And I can be with it. I can be with the discomfort. I can be with this kind of little annoyance. I can be with all my thoughts that come up. All the feelings that are involved in this. And I just round in like acceptance. I round myself into acceptance. And then I have some parts of it that are just kind of sticking out into space now. I have this line here. I have like a lot of parts, a lot of points where it's just sticking out. So I want to connect those to the edge of my circle. So I go here with a neurographic line that just connects these little parts with the rest of my drawing. Connecting to the other lines, connecting to the edge of the circle. I really want to connect every little part. Saying, yeah, okay. I am connecting to you. I'm connecting to this problem. What I experience as a problem or maybe a challenge or maybe just an annoyance, I'm connecting to it. And again, kind of feeling into what does that open up inside you? How does your body feel when you're creating these connections, when you allow this into your life, into your consciousness? What kind of emotions show up? What thoughts are playing in your mind? What is the story that is playing out in your mind while you do this? And again, just becoming aware, no right or wrong. Until everything is rounded and connected. So here we really want to make sure that everything is round. And you can even go over the lines inside your catharsis again with some little bit wavy lines maybe breaking it up a little bit hmm. Just taking a few deep breaths and i'm going to give everyone a few more seconds or a few more minutes maybe um, and you can create as many connections to the edge of the circle as feels good. If you feel somewhere there needs to be another connection, you can just create it from whichever part of your original scribble. And the idea here is also to break it up, to change its shape. And in a way to change this shape in our minds, but to change what it means. What it means to be with 
our challenges. And just like little challenges today. Okay, so I hope that everyone has their catharsis connected and then just be with this new image for a moment look at it look at what came out of this first weird scribble what it looks like now i want to see this wants to be connected as well making sure that you don't have any shapes kind of sticking out into space you want everything that's reaching out in whichever way connected and allowing yourself to connect to it and now we're going to connect it even more to the rest of our drawing and to the background so i don't have a lot of space here but i'm still going to continue these lines all the way up to the edge of my paper so everywhere where i have a line kind of ending at my circle now, I will bring it into the surrounding. And again, kind of rounding the line, connecting it to the circle, and allowing this energy to flow out. We don't have to hold on to this energy anymore. We can release it, we can release it with the drawing and also connect to our surrounding. So if your circle is more in the middle than mine, for example, you have, of course, much more space to go. I'm just gonna continue this one a little bit longer. And it can meet my original lines. And just, it can connect and mingle with those first lines. And again, kind of feeling what it feels like to draw this out, to move this into the rest of the space. So the energy that we first released with the catharsis, it is now being freed in a way. It is being released. We can also think about things, people that can help us in our environment. People, for example, that we're connected with that may can help us with this theme that we're working on. And just allowing yourself to ask questions, ask questions in your mind without really looking for an answer, but just allowing the space. What if, what if there was something or someone that could support you with this little annoying thing in your life? And just feeling into that even if there is no specific person that comes to your mind, just allowing like the, the feeling, the thought, what if I was supported? And moving the support through the drawing. And I always draw my lines to the edge of the paper wherever they can end up anywhere. It doesn't have to be at a specific side. It just at any edge of the paper. And every time I draw a line, I want to connect it again. Feeling this connectedness to your surrounding. Even if we're dealing with our own problems, we're never alone in this world. We are always part of a larger surrounding, always part of the world. 
And just feeling into this, allowing yourself to connect. Even if you're not perfect, you are worthy of being in this world. Even if you have challenges in your life. Just working through it, feeling the feelings that come up, allowing your body to speak to you if it needs to. Okay, I'm gonna read some questions. Okay, I'm curious about the way you've drawn your lines, very quivering. Is this essential and what is the purpose or reason? The way we draw the lines, I have a one hour video just on the lines. The reason why I draw it quivery is because I try to allow my mind to not control it. I allow my hand to move in a natural way, which is always moving. So oh, naturally, our lines are never going to be straight. Even though as humans, we love straight lines, in nature, things will always move. So if you look at a river, the way that roots grow, plants, um, this is, we in a way copy nature. We try to copy nature. We try to get back to a natural feeling. And so I allow my hand to move in a wavy, natural way that is my way. Your lines will absolutely look different from mine and that is absolutely okay. And as I said, there's a lot to the lines. Um, this is just a short introduction. Um, I'm going to share the other video with everyone where you can really dive deeper into the line. Yeah, your lines are more flowing, that's perfect. There is a lot of overlap so my image looks very different. So I think I've missed something key. No, you can have a lot of overlap. Your picture can absolutely look completely different from mine. That is perfect. And I also have a lot more overlapping. Mine looks a lot messier. That is all right. Maybe your life is a lot messier. <laughs> you can ask yourself, what does that mean to you? No, that's the thing. Like, that's what we always do in a neurographic at once. It, when you look at your drawing and you see something there, it will look different from mine. That's the whole purpose. And you can ask yourself, what does that mean to me? What does that mean in connection to my original intention of the drawing? Why is it messy? What part of your life is messy there? How can you clean it up? No, you can ask yourself many, many questions. That's really one other part. That is how we create meaning. We ask questions. Um, is there any significance to always have the theme half of the page? So you mean your circle where the theme is, is half of the page? Um, well, I would ask you, what is the significance for you? So I usually don't interpret other people's drawings. What we do in Neurographica is that you find an interpretation for your drawing. So when you look at it and you see that your theme is half of the page, what does that mean to you? Maybe you need more space. Maybe, um, yeah, maybe you can only look at half of it at this moment. Um, kind of just allow yourself to interpret it and allow yourself to listen to whatever comes up in your mind. Allow your intuition to solve the problem, I'm going to say. Um, okay, she says she'd like to have the link to this video when you release it. Yes, no problem. I have this video on my YouTube already. I will share it with everyone. And you did not miss any important pieces. Just continue. Just keep on going. It's all good. Yeah. Nice. Thank you. Someone says we're all different. So our lines will be different too. Absolutely. A hundred percent. Another question. Can the problem we put in the circle be an internal problem? Absolutely. Yes. A health problem. Yes. A hundred percent. Something that you want to sh uh, kind of change for yourself. It can absolutely be a health problem. Yes. 
and I'm having a hard time not judging my connections, my rounding. Mine are much less smooth. Yes. Just, you know, become aware of it and allow yourself some beginner's um, grace. You know, kind of allow yourself to struggle. It's totally fine. You don't have to be perfect, especially if you're just new to this. You will learn it. And this is really, it is a practice. It will change with time. So if you're just starting, just allow yourself to be with it. It doesn't have to be perfect at all. There is no perfection in this ever. So, um, oh, and one person says mine looks scary. Well, whatever comes up for you really kind of, you can interpret it as a message for you considering your theme. So if it looks scary, then ask yourself what part of your theme is scary to you. So I hope that helps. Okay. Um, okay, nice. Thank you. This session already helped me understand many things about my problem and I had some aha times. Looks extremely complicated. Thank you for sharing that. I'm very excited that you already had some aha times. That's very impressive. Okay. <laughs> Congratulations. So I'm going to say we, go, we will move into coloring now. Um, coloring is one essential part of the drawing process. The way I like to use color is I just pick a color. I can share with you my kind of color chaos that I work with. I literally have all my pencils in this box. They're not like color coded or anything. They're just like a little mess. Um, I totally understand if that's not everyone's way to approach this, but this is how I do it. And I just look and I pick the one that jumps into my eyes first. So this one was the one where I'm like, ooh, this color. And then I go into the drawing wherever I look in the drawing first. And this is kind of here. This area here, this is like interesting for me. For some reason, I don't have to know why. I will go in here and start coloring. And first of all, I'm gonna show you what we're not gonna do. We will not just color one little segment. We will always move across boundaries. So all the lines that we created here are boundaries now. You know, all the lines, there are little aspects of our theme that um, might make it very complicated. What we want to do with the color is make it easier. So we will move the color. I like to really understand and see and feel the color as a moving energy. So I move through space with the help of the color, creating larger entities. And really just kind of feeling where the color wants to go. And I, of course, kind of orient myself on all the little things that I see. But as I said, we're never going to want to just color one little thing and then um, color the next one in a different color. We want to create larger spaces and in a way really make more space in our minds. Make more space for new views, for solutions, and for flow. So really with the coloring we can connect to our inner child. This is something that I've been practicing in the past few weeks. And just allowing play, allowing exploration, it doesn't have to look like anything specific. We're just moving through space, moving through our creation and bringing areas together, combining. And of course, with the color as well, we can feel into it again. First of all, feel the color, kind of ask yourself, how does this feel for my body? What kind of sensations or what emotions come up? 
Maybe even where do I feel the color? Do you feel it in your body somewhere? And then really just allowing the color to be this moving energy, working with the frequency of the color. And this can be without interpreting it. Maybe you do have a story for it in your head. But even if not, that's absolutely all right. We don't need to know what this color means. We just need to feel it. And we need to allow it to move. And so I'm going to move this color as far as I want to, as far as kind of I feel called to, through my space here. And then I can, for example, because I'm working with color pencils, I can just let it fade out. So I don't need to fill all the space. I don't need to actually fill up all the little segments. I can just kind of let it flow into space. This is something that I like to do with colored pencils. If you work with other coloring materials, you will, of course, have other possibilities with them other restrictions with them just like allowing yourself a little playfulness and then whenever i'm finished with this i just grab the next one and i literally just grab the next one that's there where i feel like yeah it's this one now and i go back into my drawing exploring more spaces feeling the color breathing with it allowing it to spread and you can really just imagine it spreading out into the space that you created wherever it wants to go and again with colored pencils you can also overlap so if you have the feeling that a color belongs in two spots, for example, you can um, overlap the colors, layer them, and we don't have to color everything. So it's absolutely fine to have white spaces as well. I just want to explore this kind of movement here. And we can go wherever we want to go in this drawing. And as I said, you can fade out. You don't have to fill everything. There might be areas where it's stronger. There might be areas where it's weaker. And I invite you to really kind of observe and feel into the space as just a landscape a landscape of lines and connections and just allow the color to move through this landscape wherever it needs to go trusting your inner feeling just trusting your feeling that's really something that we can learn with neurographica trusting our intuitive hunches paying attention to them paying attention to what it feels like what does the color feel like to you and as i said maybe there's a meaning in your mind and paying attention to that too. Maybe there's questions that come up with it. But most of all, allowing yourself to feel into it, to experience the color as a vibration. And really connecting to yourself through it. 
connecting to your body, connecting to your emotions and your thoughts. And opening yourself up to a new experience. And again, there's no right or wrong here. Just go with whatever you feel like. And it will look completely different than mine. And that is perfect. That's exactly what we want. That's what Neurographic is all about. It is your picture. It will speak in a language that only you understand. And in the process here, we are slowly, slowly learning our own language. We are practicing listening. This is really a practice of listening. I'm going to just do that for another, I'm going to say maybe five, six minutes. Just allowing yourself to play. Try out new things. And remind yourself to go over the lines. I know that we've all probably... I can definitely talk to for myself. I've learned as a little kid to stay within the lines when you're coloring a coloring book and it has to be all neat, neat. And there's a right and a wrong. And here we can drop all these beliefs. We can drop all this patterning. We can just free ourselves from those boundaries, from those, um, judgments that we may have learned here we can really kind of just flow flow with it allow it to go wherever it wants to go I want to remind everyone to come back to your breath. Coming back to yourself. Your inner world. Your body, emotions and thoughts your breath
just okay let's give it one more minute and then we're going to move on if you feel that your picture at some point needs more color you can of course come back to it But as I said, it's absolutely fine to leave some areas white. And like just partially colored. Just want to play and explore with the colors. And hopefully your picture will have a very different character now that you have added some color to it. Maybe there are shapes that are very interesting for you. Maybe there are even shapes that remind you of something. Maybe you see some symbolism in there. And so if that is true for you, then that is something that we just want to pay attention to it. Or whatever you see in there, just become aware of it. And you can again ask yourself, what does that have to do with my original theme. What's the message? How can this help me somehow to understand myself better? Or to find a solution? Or to make a change? Okay, now um, we want to add a little bit more line again. And this time we will make lines from one edge of the paper to any other edge. There might be a direction that you feel in your drawing. For me, the direction goes like this. It goes towards this circle. So when you just look at your drawing, maybe the color uh, created a direction somehow, or maybe you just kind of just feel into it. Is it from bottom to top or from left to right or a diagonal, whatever it is, just kind of feel where is the direction in your drawing. And then we will allow a neurographic line to go in that direction. It can be a completely new line or it can also connect to already present lines. For me, I'm going to start somewhere in here um, because this is just the area where I feel it starts. So I don't have to reason that. I just feel like it starts somewhere here. So I'm going to just start it somewhere here. So what I will do is I go with a neurographic line, as I said. It can be flowing and it can be flowing into a line that's already there. Follow this a little bit, maybe follow it some more. And I kind of feel it needs to go through this somehow and out on the other end. So I'm going to just follow this line several times. And I will go in the direction that I feel is the flow direction of my drawing. My drawing definitely flows in this direction here. And I will, as I said, just go over it several times, allowing it to become thicker in some parts. And really feeling the flow. Right here you can really go over the same again and again, and it will be lightly different every time and just feeling this flow feeling this movement of this line bringing a flow into the drawing connecting with the greater flow of life and then i will go in and actually color it in so i want this line to kind of stand out and wherever it meets other lines, where I have little corners again, I'm going to round those out to make sure that this flow is connected. So here again, we want to create connection 
between all the elements in the drawing. You want to create connection to the flow. So you can imagine this is the flow of your drawing now. In theory, we could add several of those, but I'm just going to add one. If you feel like you would like to add a second line, you can absolutely go for it. I would not add more than three at the moment. But if you feel that there's another pathway that is important for you, where you kind of feel this flow, then you can go with that as well. And so I'm coloring it in. It can be, as I said, stronger in some spaces, just like a river. Really, when you look at it, you want to have this kind of imagery of a river flowing through your drawing. And you can imagine it like a river of energy that is infusing your drawing with energy. And moving through it. So now I have this flow of my drawings. And as I said, I could add a second one, but I'm just going to leave it with this one. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see a question. There was a question about the colors. Are all the colors supposed to start from the circle and flow outwards from there? They don't have to. Um, as you can probably see in my drawing, a lot of the colors do start in my circle because there's a lot of energy there for me. So I felt drawn to it, but you can also start at other places. This one color here, for example, doesn't meet the circle. It just started somewhere and goes somewhere. So the coloring is not necessarily connected to the circle. It can just be colored wherever. I'm sorry, I saw that a little bit late. But I hope it still helps. Okay, so I'm going to give you another uh, maybe two minutes to draw your line. And connect it to the rest of the drawing, smoothing out any corners, rounding, and really kind of imagining this flow of the drawing, giving it a direction. And maybe the direction that you feel is towards your, I'm going to say, problem in, uh, <laughs> in brackets or your challenge. Maybe it's uh, moving away from it. Maybe it's moving around it. And you can really look at, okay, what, what you know, might this line even tell me? What does the flow tell me? Just interpreting it for yourself. Just allowing your mind to come up with whatever wants to come up right now. And if there's nothing, then that's okay too. We're not pushing ourselves for answers. We're always just opening the door and say, okay, intuition, if you have anything to say about that, now is the time to talk. And then we listen. Okay. Now as our very last step. We want to create what we call an emphasis in the drawing, which means that we choose an area of the drawing that we feel drawn to um, and that we will bring out stronger. It can be the circle that's already there, but you can also create another circle somewhere. In the beginning, I absolutely recommend to actually make it a circle. Um, later, we can also work with other figures or with like shapes that we find in the drawing. But for today, for this session, I recommend to do a circle. For me, I feel drawn to this area here. For some reason, the way the wave is going here, it's almost meeting my circle, but it's like right in front of it. Um, so I'm going to create a circle here and I'm just going to allow my hand to make it as big as it needs to be right now, which 
I don't really know how big it's going to be. I kind of feel that this area is, is going to be included in it. And apparently it's also going to meet my circle. So I'm creating a new circle here. As I said, if you feel that your already present circle for you has the answer, then you go with that. If you feel visually drawn to some other part in your drawing and really just allowing your eyes to see when I look at my drawing, I keep looking here. And you can even like close your eyes and open them and see where do, you, do your eyes go first. What is it that you see in your drawing? You don't need to know why you see it. You don't need to have an answer for it. You just go with your intuition and listen to it and allow it to point you to the point where you need to look. And then I'm going to go around this circle now several times. So if you chose your original circle, just go over it several times. If you create a new circle somewhere, go over it several times so that the outline becomes thicker. So now this is standing out for me. And then I will again connect this to the rest of my drawing by rounding any corners. So anywhere where my circle is now moving into the space, connecting to the lines. I can, of course, become aware of which colors are in there, where it is in the drawing, how it is connected to my energy line, how it is connected to my original scribble. And I can ask myself, what does that mean to me? How can this help me? And as I said, when we ask ourselves questions, we don't have to expect answers to come right away. We can just put the questions into space and say, yeah, intuition, if you have anything to tell me, you can. Opening the door, allowing whatever needs to come up for you to come up, and if it's not ready right now, then that's okay too. Then maybe in a day or two, you can look at your drawing and maybe then there might be something coming up. So we're really just, as I said, opening the door, allowing ourselves to connect to our inner wisdom, to our subconscious. And feeling into it, how does this circle feel for you? What body sensations, emotions come up with it? And as I said, we rounded. Boom, and just allow whatever wants to come up to come up and if it's confusion right now then that's all right too so this is the finishing of the drawing now what i like to do is journal so i absolutely invite you after this session to sit down and journal about your picture about the problem or the challenge or your initial um, intention that you set about maybe the flow, the colors, about what you see in the drawing and allow your mind to process this experience and see what comes up, see what happens. Um, the last step in our process is always a reflection. So as I said, this technique this practice is really not just about drawing a drawing it is also about finding what the drawing wants to communicate to us so i'm going to journal on this in a minute after this uh, session is over um, and i just wanted to come back to this for one more second to yeah allow us to see that now we are here you no know, now we're at the other side of the drawing and we can see okay what changed did something change 
when I look at myself in the beginning and I look at myself now, how do I feel? Do I understand something about myself better? Um, and if the answers don't come up right away, please do not give up. Because this is really a practice. Or as I said here, this one I should probably circle this red because it's very important. It is a practice. It is opening the channel to our inner wisdom and we need to practice it and it will get easier. So every time we listen, more information will flow in. More insight will come up. Now for me, really, I have practiced this a lot. When I ask myself a question, I know the answer. And I know that is something that we can just feel without the drawing as well, but the drawing kind of allows our um, conscious mind, now our kind of monkey mind that's thinking all the time, to look at it in a different way, you know, kind of look in a different direction. We give it something to do, and that allows the door to open. So it's in a way like a, a kind of art that can help us silence our chatter and bring up more layers of what we experience with including all these different layers of emotions of the body. So if I, for example, had a problem here where I would make a decision, this decision could now be something that I really embody that is connected to my physical body, that is connected to my emotions. Um, so I hope that makes sense for you. I would absolutely love how people feel about this. I want to know, to know how few people feel about this. Um, so before I stop now. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Sue says, I'm amazed at what a beautiful piece came from being frustrated with dirty dishes. I love it. Yes. This is exactly the effect that we want. Now we start with something that's like, eh. And then we bring out something where we can look at it and we're like, oh, wow, look at this. Um, so I want to just very, very, very briefly speak about um, the basics course that I'm going to teach this month. Starting August 11th, this course will and is also um, available as a self-study course. So you don't have to do the life, but the life is fun. So um, if you like to interact... Um, I like to interact with people, so I always enjoy the live courses. Um, in this course, I teach the knowledge, the theory behind all of this. I teach you the steps so that you can practice this practice and find your own way of creating your own drawings. There are three different versions of working with this catharsis, with this scribble that we will learn. And there is an extra drawing that we call um, the algorithm for clarifying your intentions to find clarity, finding inner clarity. So um, all of these you will learn. Um, and um, for me, it's very, very important to not only teach the theory, of course, I also teach the skill. So we will actually in each class do drawings, we practice. And uh, for me, it's really, really important to help people the, uh, with the experience. You no, know, it's like we will um, really focus on opening this door, opening this door for you so that you can express yourself in a way that actually helps your mind process things differently. So that is really like, for me, the goal of the entire course is to enable you to use this method in your own life, enable you to take these things and, um, yeah, kind of work with whatever challenge you feel coming up. Um, Da, 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 da. Anything else I want to say? Um, for anyone who has already done the basics course, I also teach other classes. You can find them on my website. I <laughs> just wanted to mention that too. Um, and for every, like, whoever wants to go super, super, super deep, 
Beyond a uh, group program, I also offer one-on-one -on -one work where we, um, where I create a drawing process just for you, and I guide you through it. And it's like it's like a coaching, but a little bit different than a coaching. I want to say, um, it's yeah, a coaching that really involves looking at your subconscious layers, and um, yeah, maybe I should also mention that um, I have. A, a little gift um, for everyone who's joining the basics course after the course whenever you finish um, I will we will have a 30 minute one-on-one -on -one meeting uh, where we uh, look at your drawings I like to do this in a one-on-one -on -one space because for me it's very good to um, have a one-on-one -on -one connection I'm a mental projector for anyone who's into human design so I see things in your drawings and for a lot of people it helps them to have other eyes on the drawings so as i said i usually don't like to interpret people's drawings but very often there's stuff coming up for me and i may ask you a question and maybe it's gonna um yeah tap into something there so um yeah this is the offer and um oh i wanted to say one thing to any colleagues anybody who's watching this video who's uh working with neurographica you are very very welcome to use my uh, drawing process from today mentioning me as the creator thank you very much okay and uh now i'm gonna open the space up for everyone here for questions i'm gonna just go through and uh see if there's any questions right now da -da -da -da. Um, why the second circle needs to be thicker? It's so that your brain will see it first. When we look at the drawing, we want to see the one that's emphasized and we want to remember what came up. So when I look at this drawing here, I will see, oh yeah, I am here. This is what I need to focus on. So it gives us a focus and I want to recommend to everyone, I'm glad that the recording still running keep your drawing in your space for at least a week so that your subconscious can continue processing your process as i said maybe in three or four days you may just see your drawing out of the corner of your eye and suddenly you might have an insight be open to it. I'm not going to promise this to anyone. I'm not going to promise that your drawing will like solve your problem in just one session, but I'm going to tell you that allowing your subconscious to process it and to just, especially if you're completely new, you know, just be with it for a little bit and see what comes up without pushing, without pressuring, without, you know, kind of being upset if nothing comes, just allowing this openness. Um, okay, there's thank you very much. You're very, very welcome. Nice. It helps some people understand. Can you do this with watercolor? I'm going to say it's possible. You could experiment with it. Um, I recommend colored pencils, especially in the beginning, because of the way we draw, um, because of the way we can layer things, because of the way we can slowly add color. But we also work with markers. In the course, we work with markers highlighters and colored pencils. So those are the things that I teach. Um, um, and yes, for the one-on-one, -on -one I can, uh, I'm gonna send out information for my website and everything and my email. So you can absolutely contact me um, if you're interested in this. And um, a payment plan, I'm going to, yeah, just contact me directly and we can talk, talk about that. So if you have any other questions about the course um, or any requests or any other way I can help, um, just contact me 